Welcome to the Marriage Counselor's Corner. Right this way. Your therapist will see you shortly. In the meantime, sit back, kick your feet up on the couch, and get ready to focus on adding very valuable tools to your marriage toolkit. And now your host and marriage counselor, David Taylor. What's up, guys? My name is David Taylor, and I am your host. Welcome back to another episode of the Marriage Counselor's Corner podcast. You have come to the right place because I got some information for you today. I know I'm a day late. Don't hold it against me. I promise I've been busy, but this episode is coming and it's going to be a banger. But (laughs) before we get there, I just want to let you guys know you've come to the place. This is the Marriage Counselor's Corner podcast, and this is a place where you're going to get credible and tangible marriage-related information from a licensed mental health counselor. Now, over my past almost two decades of clinical experience, I have discovered some things that work to make your marriage healthy. So, See these episodes as a masterclass in marriage where I take a psychological and practical approach to marriage education and enrichment. Oh, okay, guys. (laughs) You know, maybe subconsciously I was was delaying this episode because this is going to be an interesting one. This is episode number 28, and in today's session, oh, gosh, I'm going to be discussing a topic... (laughs) that may be more popular with the husbands than it will be with wives. As a matter of fact, this may very well be my last episode because wives may listen to this and they may not want to have nothing else to do with me after they hear what I got to say. (laughs) So to be more specific, this session will focus more on something that wives have been wrestling with. So I'm going to be focusing on how most wives are married to the fantasy. (laughs) See, I told you, this episode is probably going to be more popular with the husbands than with the wives. But wives, please, please stick with me. As a matter of fact, all of you wives that are here, please report to the front of the classroom. I need you to take your seats at the front. Bring every bit of your notebook and pen and pad with you because this is going to be one of those episodes where we have to have a conversation. And husbands, please go to the back, hang back for a while. Don't disconnect, don't disengage. But like this episode is going to be mainly focused on the wives. But I, I want you husbands to still pay attention because there will be some details that you will want to make sure that you have in order to better show up inside of your marriage. But wives... Oh, this one is going to be for you. And let me just say this. I want to give a word of caution first. So wives, this episode is going to most likely trigger you. Some of you guys, maybe many of you. I'm not going to hide that fact. (laughs) This episode will highlight something that I see about 95% of the time when I'm working with couples and when I'm working with individuals, especially women. Meaning the overwhelming majority of the times that I am working with a wife, whether it is individually or in a couple's counseling session, this concern manifests. Okay, so do not tune this episode out just because of its potentially triggering nature. I need you to share this episode with every married woman that you know. Actually, you know what? Single women could could really benefit from this conversation as well. And most likely that's the case because at some point, whether you're single or, or, or married, you will have most likely been guilty or are guilty of what I am about to disclose with you. So again, pay close attention. Do not let how this information makes you feel distract you from the truth because the truth will set you free. So, I got some things. I just got to get some things off of my chest. But this is, trust me, this is going to be help. This is going going to be good. It's going to be good. Now, I have heard from many husbands, many husbands, that their wives struggle with taking accountability. 
And I scoff at that statement. I scoff. I laugh like, no, nah, not the wives that I work with, not the wives that listen to my podcast. <laughs> Those wives love accountability because they love growth. So I am issuing a challenge directly to all of the wives and single women that will be listening to this. Break the stigma. Show them that you can be accountable. Show them welcome accountability. Okay. Because if you can accept what I am about to share with you, this information may prove to be a game changer for your marriage. Oh, and resist the temptation to try to bring your husband into the discussion. He's in the back of the room. Okay. Don't try to bring him up here with you, but, but don't worry. I will have plenty of additional episodes and already have had plenty of episodes where I address how he shows up in the marriage. But this one, this episode here, it's all about you. It's all about you, boo. <laughs> Lastly, and I want to make this point, this information will be extremely useful for you, right? The wife, it's going to be beneficial for you because if taken correctly, this will help you to increase your awareness of how you show up inside of your marriage, the expectations that you brought with you into your marriage, and how they shape how you interact with your husband. Actually, I'm going to go a step further. This information will help you to be aware of how you see him all together. Okay, so now I got the disclaimers out of the way. I would like to start with a polarizing statement. You'd like to hear it? Here it go. <laughs> you, and I'm speaking to the wives, you are not married to your husband. I know, I know. You got his last name. His name is on the marriage certificate. I, I get it. I know. You think you're married to him. But hear me out for a second. You are not married to your husband. You are married to the ideal version of him. You are married to who you want him to be, not who he currently is. Okay, now walk with me, okay? Stick with me. Some of y'all done dropped off already. Come back. I promise I don't bite. Come back. <laughs> For example, if I asked you to imagine what your ideal husband looks like, how he acts, how he treats you, how he carries himself, most likely this guy will look vastly different than the husband that lies next to you at night. The guy that's spooning you, the guy that's snoring in your bed, most likely the image, the ideal version of him looks completely different than who he really is. Most likely who you desire for your husband to be and who he actually is are two completely individuals. But wait, there's more. <laughs> What I'm about to say is not my opinion. This is not David's opinion. This is not my personal thoughts. These are real life observations by a real life therapist who spends the majority of his time working and dealing with these types of marital concerns. Okay. I have also noticed that not only is the wife married to the potential of her husband, she fights she fights to get him to fit that ideal image. The basis of many of her conflicts with him is him not meeting the expectation or standard that she has set for the marriage. See, she has an idea of how marriage should feel. And that image is often perpetuated by things on social media things in movies, and even her peers. She wants the fullness of love and believes that her marriage is the perfect place to create such an experience. That is why for her marriage, it is all about an experience. And women, if you're honest, women, wives, will go to extreme lengths to capture just a whiff a whiff of that experience. See, I have seen wives tolerate some extreme dysfunction from their husbands just to get it, just to get a whiff of that ideal marriage. And they will, in the process, 
become dysfunctional themselves. If that means getting a taste of the ideal experience of marriage. And listen, I work with a lot of worst case scenarios. So I've seen women tolerate all kinds of dysfunction, all kinds of stuff, just to get this ideal image of marriage. Wives, do not disqualify yourselves here because I'm about to go even deeper. We are just about to go beneath the surface. I have found that most wives are not in love with their actual husbands. Mm hmm. Yep. I went there. Just watch with just 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 stay with me. Just stay with me. <laughs> they are instead in love with the idea of achieving their ideal husband. They're in love with how it would potentially feel to be loved by that ideal husband. And because that is the case, they will struggle to truly be satisfied in their current marriage. To go a step further, I have noticed that many wives settle for the husbands they have because they truly feel that he can become the husband that she desires. She is patient, but persistent. On the surface, she appears accepting, but beneath the surface, she secretly resents him for not delivering on his promises. She resents him because she is loyal to love, even if it means not being fulfilled. She secretly resents him because love, in this instance, is truly painful. And this is why many husbands echo the same sentiment. And again, this is not my opinion. This is facts. I, I have not worked with a husband yet who at some point, in some way, said the same statement. Here's the statement. It doesn't matter what I do. It is never good enough. For her, I can do 10 good things, but that one mistake erases all of the good that I did. It's not enough. It's never enough. She's not happy. She worries a lot. She's anxious. Now, let me take a step away from the wise for a second because I, I do need to tackle this as well. I got to be honest, right? I know my purpose. It's to help people find their truth. So I got to be honest. I got to say some stuff. And this is for the husbands. I know y'all in the back of the room playing video games. Listen for a second. So this statement that you mentioned, it, it doesn't matter what I do. It's never good enough. Well, a lot of that is because it is not good enough. It's because it's not good enough. See, husbands, your lackluster current performance is in direct contradiction to the mask that you wore to court her. See, at the beginning of the relationship, you convinced her that true love is real. And in her desperation to capture such a mirage, she bought into your presentation. This is how it works. You duped her into believing that you were different, that you were romantic, emotionally balanced, spiritual, empathic, nurturing, strong, smart, responsible, and moral. She believed you because she wanted to, even when she saw the yellow flags. She believed you even when she saw that the mirage was not tangible. She believed you because it's easy to hide behind what you are not receiving so that you never have to focus on who you really are and what you truly have. Wives, back to you. Okay, I just had to say this to the husband because he, he shouldn't have said that. So he had to speak up. So I had to say something to him. But wives, stick with me because this next part is as equally important as what I just said to the husbands. Okay, husbands, carry on. Wives, let's let's get busy. Let's focus. See, here's the thing. Oh, gosh, this is about to get a little deeper. <laughs> the wife doesn't have to grow. She only has to appear in motion. Let me explain. See. She doesn't have to grow in the marriage. She only just has to appear as if she's mobile, as if she's moving. She only has to appear busy with the demands of being a mother and being a wife and having a full-time job 
Her mobility highlights the husband's stagnation. So if I'm moving, it's easy to, to highlight something that's not moving. Which is why she will often bring him with her to see me. But see, I see the truth. She's in motion, but not in progress. Her motion is merely her attempts at moving the marriage towards the mirage that masquerades as the ideal marriage. I'm going to say that again. Her motion is merely her attempts at moving the marriage towards the mirage that masquerades as the ideal marriage. And doing so hides her wifely blemishes because the husband's flaws stand out more. This is true. This, this is what happens. See, no one is pointing out the fact that she has lost herself somewhere in the marriage as she has toiled in desperation, attempting to catch the elusive shadow of marital success. Nobody has pointed that fact out to her. See, nobody has pointed out that she buried herself deep beneath the veneer of raising her kids, deep beneath the role of being a mother. See, see, this is why wives desire presentation. Remember the five Ps that I discussed in episode 25, the five Ps to being a wife? You know, y'all probably remember the five Ps to masculinity, but I also talked about five Ps to being a wife. So if you don't remember, because that episode was more so targeted towards the husbands, so y'all probably ain't take the notes on this. Let me give you a brief overview of the five Ps to being a wife so that you can at least understand on a more contextual level what the heck this is all really about. So remember that first P I talked about was performance. And I defined performance as this. I said, the greater the performance that the husband puts on, the more wives feel cared for. The more she feels cared for, the more connected she'll feel inside of the marriage with him. See, performance means that whatever the husband does has to be done with intention and with effort. Now, it doesn't have to be grand, although that's important at times. It just has to show that whatever it is, it matters, right? So it doesn't have to be grand. It just has to show that it, whatever this thing is that he's doing, he's doing it with intentionality and he's doing it because he cares, right? And it matters to her. And so, so this is why you'll see these grandiose proposals. And this is why you see a lot of people go over the top to pay for their weddings because it's all about the performance. Again, if you would have came to my, my wedding with Mandy, it was a performance. We said some very eloquent vows. It was a performance, right? The next P is the P of present. See, probably the greatest way for your husband to connect with you is for him to be present with you. That makes sense, right? That's, well, that's not harmful. <laughs> this is accomplished through his attention, through his time, and through his energy. So how he uses his attention, how he uses his time, and how he uses his energy often has an impact on how present he is. Because he can be in the same home with you, the same room with you, and not be present. Present means that he is intentionally engaging in the things that matter to you the most. Present means that he sees you and feels you. This is why connection is so imperative to the experience of a wife, because the more present you are, the more connected she'll feel. All right, so we did performance. We did the P of present. The third P is the P of presentation. This is important, guys, or this is important, women. <laughs> Women are romantic and fanatical creatures. Do not take offense to that because I'm not saying that in a derogatory term or in a derogatory manner. I'm just stating what is. Women are feelers. You guys have heard me say women are four-dimensional feelers. And by nature, they are great at creating very emotion-driven narratives about almost any experience that they have. Any experience, it could be something that happened 10 years ago or something that happened 10 minutes ago, and they can create these very eloquent, emotion-driven narratives about it because they that's how they exist in their world, right? They exist, they experience through how they feel, okay? See, if being present means dealing in reality, presentation means feeding the fantasy. This is why books like Fifty Shades of Grey 
is one of the best selling book series of all time, right? It was something about that book that fed the fantasy the most, right? There was something about this storyline that most, if not all women, this fantasy it was feeding, okay? And so you got to think of it from that standpoint. This is why women love uh, drama and rom-coms. And back in the day, you, they used to love soap operas, right? This is why this is this is why Romeo and Juliet was so popular. <laughs> it's a love story. This is why Cinderella and the Disney Enterprise was so popular with all these stories about princesses and princes. Why they weren't catering to little boys; they were catering to little girls who became young women who are now women, right? So presentation. Think about that, okay? It's, and I'm I'm gonna return to this one in a in a few, but let me go to this fourth P. This fourth P is the P of prioritized. This one should go without needing much explanation. So I'll spare you some additional details here, but wives need to feel prioritized. It's not a want. Okay. And you, you, women, you know, this It's not a want, it's a need. What matters to her often has to come first. She needs to feel prioritized. Okay. So let me talk about this last P. The last P is the P of protection. Now, this is the same P that men have. However, women deal with it a little different. See, wives want and need to feel that they are their safest with their husband. Wives need to feel that their husbands can protect them based on what she needs, not just based on what is comfortable for him. Wives don't really want to lead, okay? Like, let's just put that myth to rest. Wives really don't want to lead. They want to be nurtured through their husband's ability to emotionally, physically, spiritually, and financially protect her. That's all they really want, right? So wives, why is this information important for you to understand? Why am I going over the five P's for wives? What what is that all about? Well, the answer is quite simple, okay? Hear me out. The five P's are often how you chase the fantasy. See, y'all see? No, stay with me. <laughs> stay with me. See, these five P's will impact how and why you show up in your marriage. These five P's become the barometers for how you define marital success and satisfaction, especially the two P's of performance and presentation. So let me talk about these two real quick, because this is important. you got to get this. See, wives tend to desire the P of performance because love is often determined by doing. If he does things that you desire, but those things are done on an inconsistent basis, you will push for him to be more consistent. But what if he is a natural five? in an area that you desire for him to be innate in? What if his truth is that he only has $20, but you prefer and desire 100 See, I found that it is usually at this point in the marriage that the husband doesn't feel seen or accepted and the wife feels unfulfilled. See, most of her conflicts become a subconscious plea for more from her husband, a question of whether or not he truly loves her in the manner that she desires to be loved. Most of her actions are a question, an attempt to get that question answered, right? So if he comes home and he's sitting on a couch playing his video games and then she comes in and she's like, hey, let's spend some time together. And he's like, well, I want to finish my game. She's going to use that as a barometer for how interested, how much he loves her. Because she wants more time. He's willing to give X amount of time. And so that difference, that dissonance creates doubt. Additionally, wives tend to desire the P of presentation. See, they desire this P of presentation because if he appears to have the tools to create and achieve the fantasy that wives want, she will offer him her loyalty in response. 
So the transaction then is you become how I desire and I'll give you my loyalty. She marries the potential. And in return, she gives him her loyalty. She wants the result of the presentation. That's why most women want lavish weddings. Look at the stats on the average amount that a wedding costs, and you will know exactly what I mean. That's why women want the appearance of success, even if it's an image. See, think about it from this standpoint. Most pictures that you see on social media, those pictures are a snapshot of a desired experience. Why do you think women take selfies with filters? Why do you think women create videos with filters? It's because the image represents the most preferred presentation of her life, one without the flaws and the blemishes. And most wives have marriages with filters on them because she's not interested in settling for a level five husband when she really wants a level nine husband. But how can you truly see your husband if you are looking past him? How can you truly love your husband if you are married to his ideal image? How can you truly accept the husband that you have if you keep putting a filter on him? Now, hear me clearly. I am aware that this entire episode, even though it's probably going to be one of my shorter ones, was devoted to the wives, right? Some of you may even feel attacked, but please understand that I am not positioning myself as the enemy. This is not your villain story, okay? I am only here to provide the truth. I only want for your awareness to be awoken in a much deeper level so that those things that are unknown aren't interfering with your marriage. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to wrap up. And I'm going to give you an action item that I want you to ponder over, okay? And for your action item, I want you to answer these questions. Because, see, this this conversation is just a starter. This is an appetizer, right? I'm only going to spend a little over 30 minutes. And this is just to get the conversation started. We ain't even gotten to the deep parts yet, right? We just I'm just trying to capture your attention. But there's a lot more in terms of a conversation that needs to be had. But if you can't handle this, then what happens next, we can't go to. Okay, so this is going to be a filter where some of you guys will listen to this and get offended. And then some of you guys will listen to this and say, you know what? There's truth here. Let me find how it how it resonates with me. And then let me take that truth and deal with it. So your action items is I want you to answer these questions. And they're just a few questions, not a lot, just three. Okay. Question number one, how is your desire for the ideal version of marriage disrupting you from seeing your true marriage? Another way to say it is how is the ideal version or your desire for the ideal version of your husband disrupting you from seeing his truth? Question number two, Is this your way of not facing reality? Because some of you guys are married to the ideal image because you don't want to face the truth. You don't want to face the truth that your husband may not be on the level that you desire for him to be. And then question number three is, because of that, are you afraid that if you stop pushing your husband to be his ideal self, that you will have to settle for a level five husband or a level five marriage? So are you afraid that if you take your hands off the steering wheel and you stop trying to dictate or poke or pry him into becoming the ideal version of himself, are you afraid that if you stop that, that you're going to have to settle for something that's subpar, that's mediocre? Are you afraid that you'll be stuck with a level five husband? Is that the reason why you push and poke and prod so much, right? Some of you guys are only fighting and praying for your marriage Because you want the ideal, not because you want to just love your husband for who he is, okay? And you haven't heard me say anything about just accepting who he is with a period at the end of that. There's caveats. I understand, okay? I know what I'm saying. But we have to start here. We have to start here. So 
Listen, I know that these are very difficult and scary questions to address, but I want you nonetheless to take some time to do so. Okay. So wives, please don't hesitate to reach out to me, right? If you got questions, if you want to schedule a session, even if it's just one or two where we can address just these things, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. This is, this is just one tip of the iceberg. And I hope that just even with this information, it hasn't pushed you guys away. I hope that this is opening your eyes up to say, you know what? I can do better. There are some areas that I need to grow in. And perhaps the dysfunction in my marriage has hidden that, right? I've focused more so on my husband's dysfunction. And all the while, I'm sitting over here with some dysfunction as well. Well, if that's you and you have questions, you just want to do one session or two, please feel free to reach out to me. You can email me at david at marpayservices.com. That's david at M-A-R-P-E services.com. Okay. So look, I'm going to wrap up. This is a very short session, but I'm going to wrap up here. And you guys know it is my desire that both you and your spouse use this information to take your marriage to the next level. But remember, you only get out of your marriage what you are willing to put into your marriage, not what you want from your marriage. So get to work putting in the work. Anyways, guys, thank you for coming into your session. I guess I should say anyways, wives, <laughs> thank you for coming into your session at the Marriage Counselor's Corner. Please join me in the next episode where I will be talking about another very important topic that you don't want to miss out on. Lastly, please do not forget to subscribe to the podcast. Leave me an honest rating and a review. And guess what? I didn't read one today, but I will read one next time. Okay. Give me a new one. Send me some new reviews and some new ratings and I will read them live on air. Also, the more ratings and reviews this podcast gets, the higher in the rankings this podcast grows and other people who need this information because y'all ain't sharing it. So other people who can find it organically, they will be able to find this podcast. Okay. So make sure you're doing your part. I will greatly appreciate you for that. Anyways, Go out there and make sure that you are being smart, be intentional, be strategic. Please come visit me back in the next episode and stay out of trouble. I'm David Taylor, and I will talk to you soon. Deuces. Thanks for stopping by for your seat on the couch at the Marriage Counselor's Corner. Remember, go to marriagecounselorscorner.com to schedule your next session. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so that you never miss a session. We look forward to having you back on the couch soon. Bye-bye now.